Hey out there in YouTube land, this is um, Kuda Slayer, aka Daytime Member of the Beast, uh, once again. Um, I'm doing another one of the um, world setting uh, videos for the Mechton Zeta Plus uh, gaming system. And I um, decided to do another kind of semi simple one, but this is going to be a little bit more complex. Uh, is basically I'm going to decide I'm going to talk about um, basically how to convert Battletech over into Mechton and um, I originally thought this was going to be kind of simple but I found that it was kind of an interesting challenge uh, when really when thinking about that you're basically chain, taking one old system and convert it to another and uh, realizing you know what were the um, original dynamics that made each system either worked or what limitations there were <clears throat> and uh, I, I thought it was kind of an interesting uh, exercise um, after kind of staring at it for a while um, <coughs> excuse me um, as usual this is going to be the outline that I'll be using to uh, take Battletech apart and make it fit into Mechton. Um, again, since it's still the last day of Pride Month, uh, get my one last uh, jab in. And as usual, um, the typical warning, there will be tangents. Um, I probably will be rambling about this at some point. Um, so, you've been warned. Um, but I'm going to try to make as many points as I can with this. So... Now, Battletech. Um, Battletech is is an interesting game in of itself. Um, it was released in the early '80s, mid '80s, and it's kind of interesting. It, as I talked about in the previous video, with the Transformers and other converting robots and such. Um, Battletech kind of rode in on the um, sort of the wild wild west setting that was uh, the introduction of anime and um, other related concepts being introduced to the United States. Uh, unfortunately, um, Battletech itself got caught up in the um, sort of the copyright wars that followed because of the confusion that is uh, Japanese com um, copyright law and um, how a lot of the um, you know rights and everything were uh, shared with, with several of the companies and in many cases some people didn't even know who really owned what so um, if you ever look at some of the older Battletech books you will find that there are some somewhat interesting mechs that pop up kind of like the um, down here on the one of the original uh, box sets that first came out uh, you have a, with the, the mech they refer to as the Warhammer which is actually the Excalibur from uh, Robotech slash Macross uh, kind of it, it's I always I always found that kind of interesting um, well basically let's go with the basics here um, what is the concept? The original concept behind Battletech was a quote-unquote realistic mech ground combat game. Uh, it was supposed to be set in a post-apocalyptic uh, um, sort of, well, yeah, it's almost a galaxy-wide collapse of a uh, star-faring civilization that spread out from Earth. Uh, one of the kind of annoying things that always bothered me about Battletech is uh, how all these mechs were supposed to be super rare, um, limited uh, production or surviving numbers because all the materials and factories were supposed to have been destroyed because of this great civil war. And, um, and yet for some odd reason they keep coming up with new models. You know, that was always kind of strange. And then... Um, yeah, and they kind of went back and forth a few times, and then when they, um, this is my personal criticism, when they brought in the, um, what they referred to as the Clan Wars, where the, um, a new set of factions 
that um, left before the Civil War started and came back several hundred years later, um, that's kind of really one of the big points where Faza and the other creative people involved all kind of basically just jumped the shark. And then um, that was about early 90s when that happened. Then ownership of um, Battletech changed hands several times and it kind of went back forth a few more times about whether it's, uh, you know, at least mechs supposed to be rare and yet they're being thrown around like so much to so many toys um, and, and, and up to today where even still I don't think it's still you know trying to really find where it's gonna it wants to be it's getting pretty close to where I think they want to be but it's you know there's still a lot more growing room and you know hammering at neat needs to get be happened for it can be I think really its true self so um, let's see uh, do want to go to the bank bounce uh, basically the overall concept for each of these battle mechs were that they were supposed to um, sort of mimic the deployment of um, the Starship Troopers from um, the book of the same name by Robert Hyland. I mean, if when in doubt, Ryan Science Fiction, always go for Robert Hyland as, a, as an influence. Uh, basically, um, these giant carriers will travel through space known as jump ships. They will, they base their version of faster and light, will move the system to system, and then deploy these drop ships. And the dropships will take the mechs and vehicles, and uh, for the in the mechs ca uh, case, will come up and while in orbit of, over a planet, can actually drop the mechs, and the mechs can um, go, come down, go down, and wrapped in their own you know heat shield cocoons, and then eventually land via parachute um, on the ground and go off and do their thing. Um, and, and you know that was kind of the basic concept. Most of these mechs are not going to be super fancy as you would see in mech, you know, like any kind of anime. Um, most of them are kind of slow and pondering. Um, well, some are a little faster, but still kind of somewhat a clumsy, a clumsy motion. Um, there are vehicles as, as support uh, since most of these mechs will need some kind of support in, in grand uh, combat of some kind. Um, but, uh, let's see. Okay, I guess I'm not going to gameplay and balance. Um, one of the big complaints I have about Battletech is that how rigidly standardized pretty much um, everything is. The uh, journal mechs are generally um, classified by their weight in particular groups. There's the super light, light, uh, medium, heavy, and then assault. Yeah, it might be five. Um, and for the most part, um, you know, if you could take like a 20 ton mech uh, of any type. It's always going to have the same structural integrity to it. It's going to have the same amount of internal damage that it could take to it, compared to any other 20 ton mech, or same could have any 40, 60, or 80 ton. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, and, and then um, and weapons. I mean, let's pull up the. Uh, I mean, this is the the original weapons chart for the just Battletech mechs alone, and uh, keep in mind these are supposed to be ranges and hexes, and each hex is supposed to be 30 meters. So the most longest range weapon a mech can carry is the long range missile, 21 hexes. So you're looking at 630 meters, uh, which if even if you're not familiar with the metric system, you kind of realize how short a range that really is. It's like a modern day uh, Abrams tank with 120, is it 120 millimeter can? Yeah, I think it is. 
uh, can penetrate armor at about two kilometers away. So, um, and in both you know this is a, both a fault and kind of kind of a quote unquote feature uh, to BattleTech. Uh, and I think anyone who ever does any kind of game design whatsoever should take a look at BattleTech and use that as a, an example of what goes into game design in general. Um, one of the biggest problems that you have any, in any kind of game is always going to be scale. Scale is going to determine you know, how far something's going to shoot, how far something's going to move, how far or how tall something's going to be, etc. etc. Um, with you know, weapons like these, these are not realistic ranges and uh, this was like during the early 80s so we don't, it's not, we're not, it, this is it's around a time when just the, you know, a lot of the advanced concepts we're using today in combat were just being developed. So we don't, we don't really have, uh, you know, networked, uh, t you know, combat networks, um, I think satellite um, imaging was just coming into its own, uh, being used more than just the, uh, reconnaissance uh, you know I mean these are just this these uh, all that you look here at here is compromise this is everything that if you're really deep down look at the original base material for Battletech everything was designed just to make it run you know it's not it's like a it's like a basically any um you know, the start of light cannons and like projectile, the projectile, the, um, I'm sorry, the projectile cannons that we have down here, um, you know, they start off as light, long range, and then as they go up in heavier sh shell volumes and such, uh, the range drop, you know, and that's, that's not realistic. Uh, missile launchers, um, you have your short range and your long range, and, um, uh, Kind of another one of the things is they have the minimum ranges here. That's something you know you you put in for gameplay, especially for longer range weapons. But that's not really a mechanic that um, that Mech Ten has. And uh, you know, it, it, and basically, it's another a side gripe that I have about this is uh, there's no real variance with um, weapons in general. You know, this is. Pretty much what you see is what you get in the original um, Battletech rules, and I'm, I'm sorry, I, I should have said that I'm going to be concentrating more on uh, classic Battletech than the, um, you know, the later uh, re Star Rediscover Scar Star League weapons and the uh, Plan invasions, um, mainly for simplicity. And then down here, if you're curious, these are more artillery weapons that you hardly ever see and the ranges here are actually in map sheets instead of just hexes um, so I mean these most of these are going to be off the board um, and not in direct combat anyway but um, for the mo I mean for the most part it was a good game Battletech is kind of the gate as I, I said before in other videos Battletech was the gateway drug of uh, tabletop gaming for a lot of people, and uh, I, I was got, I, I'm always kind of amused um, thinking about that and how I mean how long I used to play this game. Uh, let's see. Okay, and oh yeah, <clears throat> another main a couple of main uh, mechanics that were in the um, ritual mech that Mechton doesn't have. Is there is no heat mechanic? Um, the big limitation on me battle mechs and battle tech were that the more you move, the more you fire the weapons and did other things, uh, you generated more heat. And as the heat level goes up, more systems start to fail, and um, ev eventually you start your know, ammo starts cooking off. Uh, you can start taking damage to your engine. Your pilot can take damage because of um, 
of like the ammunition going off and getting feedback in their uh, neural link, or is there as the heat goes up, the life support systems fail? Um, and Mecton doesn't really have a system system for that, but um, I kind of find a workaround for it. Also, there's no uh, maneuver value equivalent in uh, BattleTech. BattleTech um, turn order each time you you take a turn the order of, of uh, initiative is determined by a random roll so um, that's something to keep in mind as uh, we go over some of the rule suggestions I have uh, and overall my suggestion uh, for when you try to bring Battletech into Mech 10 is do not build your mechs in Mech 10 per se take existing designs from Battletech or build you know, design your mechs in Battletech and then convert it over to Mech 10 because that's gonna, gonna really help you keep your consistency and um, you know in your gameplay uh, with a Mech 10 itself um, let's see my suggestion okay um, pretty much most of most of what you should be able to use in mech 10 uh, from about from battletech to mech 10 is should be pretty obvious i mean nothing battletech doesn't didn't really have especially in the classic days didn't really have any two exotic weapons not not to me systems were that out of place again this was created during the 80s when um a lot of modern combat that we know it today of drones and networking and whatnot um, this was still just being tested um, let's see in general decide what your uh, weight classes are going to be are you going to go from 10 tons up to 100 tons um, that's uh... oh crap I got them trying to get around me <laughs> How many different classes I figured that was going to be. Um, try to decide on you know what level of servos are going to apply to each weight class. Like if 10 tons, you want to have it all just be super light. Then 15 might increase um, maybe the torso or even the head up to uh, the next level up. Or um, even if you want at 100 tons, you want all the servos to be mega heavy. You know that's something to think about um, when you get to the weapon charts and everything since everything is pretty much standardized and there's really no changes in um, in factions you know having any kind of an edge or improvement or whatever um, you know just come up with a general weapons chart you know pick a damage level for each weapon and then uh, and pick a general ra a range, go with that, and whenever you eventually sit down and start, you know, converting everything down, just spend points on getting everything to fit in, into where it's supposed to go. Um, let's see. Since there's really no uh, maneuver, uh, maneuver value setting, um, I would really argue against anything that would have uh, any kind of uh, effect on that. So no maneuver venues, uh, vineyards, I'm sorry. Uh, power plants, especially the supercharge, and overcharge. Um, I really wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, that about that is keep everything standard and uh, hot to kind of reflect the um, kind of how the fusion power plants and Battletech worked. Um, Ace. Uh, since uh, the only real limitation that was in Battletech is heat, um, you can do pretty much everything you want until you start cooking yourself. Um, I would um, either try to l maybe limit or maybe even kind of just go ahead and just go full bore on um, Ace in general or maybe pick a certain level that all battle mechs can have. Uh, maybe give a bit of a benefit to um, lighter units. They, have, they can have a higher ace value, uh, while heavier mechs uh, may have not so much. Um, 
when you pick um, heavier energy weapons like um, say your small laser, medium laser, large laser um, as you go up in class and especially up to PPC um, each heavier wep energy weapon will ha should have like a, a longer charge rate to kind of reflect um, you know it, it, the weapon itself monitoring its own heat levels and such uh, to give you a limitation in that regard um, doing that also would probably move more of your mechs over to having um, more projectile weapons so that um, kind of would um, you know, shift the balance in a little way kind of make things maybe a little bit more interesting uh, PPC is being kind of in the classic um, setting uh, being the kind of the end all of all energy weapons uh, may want to consider giving it mega beam as an option or at least it, you know so that it reflects the fact that it's going to probably have a three turn charge up but it's going to be the most um, devastating weapon uh, energy wise on the field um, no anti-missile options not this early in the game um, no energy melee weapons I would probably wind up using a lot of use of weapon linkage to kind of um, kind of you know get get things to um, you know fire, expand your number of actions you can do in a turn um, see so I said are no energy melee weapons no shields uh, no reflectors that should be a given no remotes again uh, flight propulsion should be uh, probably just regular regular thrusters kept in a, with a jump uh, jet range um, if you want to keep your tradition of uh, of limiting your jump jets to the same amount of dis, uh, you know movement you have on ground um, you might want to use that as a uh, as a rule of thumb in itself uh, also I would kind of recommend uh, for the heavy and assault class web uh, class max uh, to use the uh, heavy and super heavy hydraulics as standard for those to kind of represent that these are units designed to do you know that you know be heavier and kind of more brawler types and uh, regular combat um, one thing I'm kind of uh, kind of torn on is the replication of the neural link that the um, Battletech pilots and the lore uh, are supposed to use uh, they don't really take much damage per se not like uh, not like when if you like you loot get into any kind of internal damage or anything you take hit points right there um, normally it won't happen if um, in Battletech if you the only way a pilot would take damage themselves would be is they took a head hit of some kind uh, from you like a melee or ranged attack uh, the pilot would take one point of damage um, if the mech falls down and fails a piloting roll the, the pilot kind of takes damage from being bounced around the cockpit um, if there's feedback when there's an internal ammo explosion um, that you know the, the pilot takes damage at that and then as the heat go goes up and uh, left support fails um, you know the the pilot takes more damage that way um, most of those don't really have any kind of a mechanic in uh, a rule in battle to I mean I'm sorry mech uh, directly so I'm kind of curious about if um, people may want to stay away from thought control which is to sort of the traditional neural control method in mech and maybe aim for its uh, virtual reflex controls to kind of reflect that with the addition of um, taking damage only in those certain cases mentioned um, if the all other alternative if, if you want you can still want to insist on using the thought control I would recommend the um, the uh, uh, bonds able or basically my version of thought control rules that I developed for uh, NOAA um, they, they can find those in the um, MEC-10 archive rules just look in the NOAA section and um, it's in toy box if I remember right but there's a kind of an expanded uh, thought control set of rules in there that um, 
might give you more options to uh, kind of hammer out what you may feel is right for your version of Battletech. Um, let's see. And then the uh, additional rules. Um, since the way the missile launchers work in, um, in Battletech, you have your LMR5s, 10s, 15s, 20s, the number and those those levels reflect how many missiles they can fire at one given time and since most of the uh, most of the missiles are, are usually like in um i know in long for the long range each uh, ton of ammo is built like 120 missiles um uh, so you may want to kind of break you know break down your um uh, use the uh, maximum missile firing multiplier to kind of uh, put your limitation on those. Uh, same thing for the short range missiles. Uh, ground movement rules. Um, that The ground movement rules will kind of give you a little bit more um, flexibility in creating faster or slower mechs uh, to uh, kind of uh, give a little bit more variety. And then another option I kind of thought about for the heavy and assault class is because they have a special spot in my heart. Um, you might want to consider giving belted armor to those units uh, to kind of reflect the fact that they're supposed to carry more armor. And uh, with only 11 step, normal steps of uh, or classes of armor, uh, given the mech turn rules, that would give you a little bit more... Um, variety in how you want to armor your units. Uh, but overall, that's pretty much my uh, my tw uh, slant on um, how I would run Battletech and Mechton. Again, Me uh, Battletech was a fun game back in the 80s. I used to play it a lot during high school. Um, in and of itself, it's a good game. But the biggest limitation is it's um, one of its backstory, even though it has tons of lore and novels that fill in almost every nook and cranny you can think of, uh, background wise. Um, there's, um, you know, there are, there are a lot of limitations because, you know, again, it came, it was created during the 80s when, you know, when more are. Method, modern day weapon systems and tactics were just beginning to be uh, created and or, you know fleshed out or even invented um, so a lot of um, you know what we can we consider modern day tactics really won't apply so looking at the, some of these designs and everything um, it would be you know it's, in some cases, it might be arguably laughable, but that was part of the compromise they did to design the game and make everything work. I mean, overall, when you got like easily 10, 20 or more figures on a board and it's supposed to be a quick, fast game, kind of a beer and pretzel type game, it used to be uh, the big thing back in the day. Um, you know, you got to make, you know, some kind of compromise to make things work. Uh, uh, as I said before, since there's no maneuver value um, equivalent, um, maybe not worry so much about that and use the random dice rolls, the 2d6, to determine the same initiative order um, as an original game. Um, and if you really do want to take on the... Um, on the tiger and, and and bring in the star league weapons and the clan league weapons um the clan level weapons i i mean that to me that's just tempting madness in itself just to to convert those rules since there's so you have the new generation of inner sphere weapons and then the newer generation of clan weapons and there's so little overlap between the two um i really wouldn't do clan wars with a uh, mech ton uh, like this um, to kind of do the um, Star League weapons with the like in the case of extended range um, or the 
pulse we laser weapons, uh, I would kind of uh, take the you know your baseline uh, basic weapons, uh, energy weapons, and then convert those. You know, like either give it like a burst value to represent the pulse, or increase the range, but still keep the um, you know the recharge uh, time time limits just to um, you know keep your your game balance in that. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, that should be about it. I think I got covered everything. I have hey, my little scratch pad here um, so anyway um, that's you know my attempt at converting Battletech into Mech 10 um, it is a challenge because you got two different systems you know take, taking one system bring it over to another it's like converting uh, computer languages into one to, uh, into the other and uh, you can you know hit a lot of bumps when you try to do something like that so anyway uh, um, that's what I have to say, and uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, or anything else, um, you know, leave them down in the comments below. Um, please hit the subscribe button. Um, you know, ever since I got out of the hospital, I'm going to be trying to make a little more of a push to do um, some more videos like this. Um, you know, kind of to support the, the gaming community and, and uh, the gaming system I believe in. Um, so... Anyway, this is Kuda Slayer slash uh, Daytime Number Beast signing off, and uh, catch you guys later next time. Bye.